我觉得小王北是一位像刺客英雄的选手。嗯、呃，我在之前的珠海德玛西亚杯上面也输给他，我希望现在的我可以赢下他，也赢下标记。AJ 是一名非常优秀的上单，呃，他打团很厉害，然后给队友能创造机会。我希望在线上能赢过他吧。Well, if your only goal is to beat Amazing J in lane, and Xiao Ao is a good laner, and Amazing J is not a good laner, then I feel like you kind of like already put that scenario like in your own favor. You know what hey, I mean?、Man. And hey, you did that. You actually smashed him in the tank versus tank matchup. So, good job, Xiao Ao. You've managed to do it. He always has hacker in the back pocket, which I love to see when it comes to sinning gaming. They're like, even when we have the tank v tank matchup,、mm -hmm. all that means that we have a better setup for the top lane、uh, yep. dive or gank that always seems to happen. So, yeah. Set yourself up for the 100% on every test.、Mm -hmm. Be like, is it one plus one equals two? I guess I got another golden star, Mama. Let's bring it on.、Hey. <laughs> I got it. Let's go. Set your own goals and make them achievable, and you too can be a star player. I mean, there you, there you, there go. you go. I was also just super surprised with、uh, because Graz and I, before we went live, just behind us was the trailer for the、um, all the stadiums that are happening in the LPL, all the new stadiums.、Yep. And I was like, wait, it's you. Wait, it's me. Because we did a bunch of filming a, a couple weeks back, and we just completely forgot about it. So there you go. Check that one out. I think it'll be happening on stream as well. So there you go. Having one of our See, breaks. But we're coming back into our second game now between、uh, BLG and Suning. And do you think this is going to be a sweep? Mr. Berenter Rasmus, do you think it's going to be?、Uh, I think、Excuse、one、her. thing to take note of is how long the games are getting nowadays. That's true. Sucks for BLG. Like the fact that BLG throughout the entire split has found themselves in a really speedy meta, which they were not an early game team. They're a much、mm -hmm. longer game team, and you see 8.16 coming up into the future. Hopefully, I think that's going to be in the playoff patch.、Uh, more catered towards tanks. Unfortunately, you're not getting the playoffs, but. Based off this meta alone, you can get to that late game portion where team fighting matters. One of the biggest weaknesses Snake、uh, Sunny Gaming has had through their career so far in the LPL has been team fighting and been nailing down games as it gets to the 20 25 minute mark.、Uh, that was a good example of that, and it seems like BLG, if they can keep at it, can take them down 2-0 to your point. But I think Sunny Gaming can have a better early game this time around. Yeah, and again, Sunny are, are hungry right now because yes, they are locked into into the playoffs, but they really want to gain momentum because we talked about momentum and it was like ah, that's a wishy washy concept, but it's very much a real thing, you know. Like if a team is winning a bunch of games, they will just continue to win because their mindset is good, and、yeah. it's such a big thing in any sport to be honest. But definitely a thing in the LPL. We have so many like high fee teams. I mean, BLG being one of them. If they win a bunch of games, they will just continue to win. And just really remember what. Their goal is going into playoffs、mm. because going into playoffs they have to go the distance. The fact that they couldn't do, get the job done in spring split, and get into playoffs, they have zero points for that work. Now you have to go into split two, where now JD are very likely going to be having a minimum of 40 points based off the fact that、yep. they are second place in the Eastern Conference. Yep. And then with how the points have been distributed, I talked about it earlier. Suning Gaming have to make a deep playoff run to really nail down a gauntlet position. While For this specific game, you're like, well, that doesn't matter. In this game, like, you just you're already locked into the playoffs, right? You have very limited stage time that you have on it, and so going up against BLG, a great team fight team, a team that has been on the stage before in playoff time last split,、mm. and now they're shaping up to be a playoff ready team that's not in the playoffs. This is great practice for you. Yeah, it really is, and I mean, I think talking to Suning a little bit more, you know, like this is almost like the perfect time, like either this or next split, because they've been slowly ramping up split by split. I don't think we've had a single split so far since Suning had joined the LPL, where I've been like, oh, they're starting to plateau, or oh, they're actually, you know, regressing. I actually think they've gotten better every single split, and at the very least, their standings out of the regular season has proved that. Exactly, and I think one of the biggest points that really hit it home for me was when they brought in Angel. Losing night. I expected a trough from that、oh, one,、yeah. and technically there was at least two games where you're like, maybe they're they're getting their sea legs. But Angel came in, came in very quickly and really joined the team as a great team fighter. Yeah, he didn't have the longer pause that Knight had in the beginning of spring when the team had to say, well, we're changing everything, so we have a one-three-one, that we have two carries. Soon in gaming in the past, remember having Fen Fen and Dian. We're never. We're just a one carry team、mm -hmm. that actually either went towards Shaal and sometimes Fury, and then when they moved towards Angel, they already had set up a system in place for them to really cater towards supporting a mid lane carry. So it was a very easy transition. Yeah, they have multi threat and they also had、uh, early game tactics. You know, I think、oh, that、yeah. was one of the most interesting things to me. That like 
when you see a lot of new teams in any professional league, they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, you know, they'll just go onto the riff of a bunch of good players and then see how it goes. But Sunin Gaming had set plays that they would execute every single time. Top lane, bot lane, mostly top lane, but it would always work out. A lot of the new teams, I'd say globally, if I were to think back towards Europe, I would say uh, Ninjas and Pajamas. They would have a oh, great early game. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I would say the one when they had Poppin in the top lane. Okay. But, like, they were a team that were great in the early game. Shook and all that. Issue is that being able to close the game as it went towards Baron was an issue. And that's actually very similar to what Sunning Gaming's had in terms of the problems last split yeah. and the year before that. They're getting much better than that, showcasing, as you pointed out, towards their standings. And I think it's really based around what their priorities when they get towards the Baron fights now. Uh, we'll probably see it in this game because they already got slammed in game one. When they get around Barons, they're a lot more willing to, more liberal in starting the fight rather than to just burning the Baron buff, they've been become a lot more decisive as a team. 100% as we get into Champion Select. For game number two, it will be soon in gaming, taking away the Misfortune, Tam Kent, and Morgana. And BLG will get the Aatrox out of here. No Akali today, and also no Yasuo. So, taking away all the, uh, the hypey picks in the mid lane, and also sad to see uh, Misfortune on the bench. Do you like a bit of Misfortune? A lot of fun to watch. Yeah, being on red side, if you're BLG, usually you would hate it. Uh, the fact that they're elected towards it means that, of course, counter picks is going to be their main priority. Remember, Athena getting the counter pick in the last game is really what got it for them. The Velka has really paid dividends. And I think that Sunin Gaming giving them the Rakan Zaya last time around, I wonder if they do it again because that was a big no no. BLG could actually just go back to the same yeah, competition. Yeah, right here. I mean, actually, BLG have like the pick of the litter, to be honest. I mean, they have so many things, right? They have the Camille to be up for Amazing Jade yep. or for the jungle as well for Mian Hua. Um, they could go Gragas, but I feel like, uh, imagine if you just like, went Rakan Camille right here. Yeah, Rakan Camille is a big one. I understand that going towards Gragas is a flex in both ways. Mianhua doesn't usually go towards the Camille pick, so... Less of a flex, yeah. I would respect that. I think they should just lock in the Rakan. I think it's very safe to do that, knowing that both the Tom Kench and the Morgana have been bound out by Sunning Gaming. So it is a no-brainer. The only real thing that if you're Sunning Gaming and you're saying that yeah, if they take the Rakan, I'll pick up the Alistar of my own. So it just means that BLG willing to pick up Rhodes Alistar. Something that he's really etched his name in the LPL for. But that means you give away the Rakan if that's what Sunny Gaming... They don't I want it. Wow. No one cares about the Rakan. No Instant one loves you. lock. Instant lock of the Gangplank and the Swain right here. That's insane. Sunning. I love the Rakan booty. I love seeing Rakan right around the map. We don't get he that. He charmed me. Unfortunate. Sad boys. I mean, if, if I'm BLG, I just say, you know, screw it, let's pick up the Rakan anyway. Uh, let's shove it mid lane. <laughs> get Alistair Rakan, heck yeah, what a draft! Get it no. in there. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I guess no one's going to pick up the Rakan. Maybe BLG just decides to ban it away on the next phase now and decides to pick up a tank. They pick up Cho'Gath. Thank God. I was like, where is your damage, please? Somebody. And I understand that we've been seeing a lot of AP Gragas, yep. but the issue is that he is not consistent damage. So locking in the Camille is necessary. Otherwise, you'd really pull your mid lane and AD carry into something a lot more of a hyper carry and then it makes it easier for yeah. Sunning Gaming to start banning up. Zai would be an immediate ban, so, or Kai'Sa as well. So There we go, not gonna be an issue that Camille got locked in. Yeah, totally fine, last minute Camille lock in. Uh, Shen ban out there from BLG towards Sunning. He's gonna ban Kai'Sa anyways. Yeah, just, <laughs> I mean, you gotta be scared of Jin Jia to a certain point. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually fought with something like a, like a Jin ban maybe, I don't know. Uh, BLG, Looking towards their final ban right here. I would say, of course, knowing that Sunny Gaming have Swain locked in means that their lane is fine as long as they don't go up against. I would say something else with Rain. Varus is another one that. Oh, Varus is still open, yeah. So if I'm Sunny Gaming, take out the range out of it. I understand Kaisa has great snowball potential with her ulti if she ever gets a lead in lane. If you take out the Varus, you have no range, no way to actually start fights bottom lane. I would appreciate it. Wow. The block, okay, left turn. That's yeah, right. I mean, right now, uh, like, Jin Zhao can pick whatever he wants. He can actually just wait until final pick if he wants to as well. Uh, he knows what he's going to be laning into, and also soon he have to reveal their support. So, yeah, he might actually just uh, look towards the mid lane pick right here. Or he could just go AD carry, do whatever he wants. People would question the LeBlanc ban, just because Athena has been much more of a mage player, as in, like, caster, an, an as Azir type rather than an assassin, but he has played as uh, the LeBlanc in the past. So just saying that we don't want to deal with the champion itself, 
want to strengthen Angel. I think Angel likely trying to go towards the Swain pickup. The possibility. Okay, this would be interesting. There's a lot of options here. Yeah, definitely. Are. I'd be surprised if he goes to Z, to be honest. Uh, since we literally just saw a Falcons in the last game. Okay, that, yeah. We're going to see ourselves at Zoe out from Suning, and it's going to be a Leona into the bottom lane. So a bit of an aggro bottom lane. Leona and Swain, actually. So immediately, just from the Zoe pick, I know a lot of people's eyes on Leona, but I want to talk about Zoe just a little All bit. Right. And I get what I want. <laughs> <laughs> You're the analyst here, as you get whatever you want. They already they just set up the pick. That's all it really is. LeBlanc is a good matchup into the Zoe. They really wanted Angel Zoe because he's performed phenomenally this summer with the pick itself. So this means that they give him the comfort pick while going on to the hard engage. And that's when we can talk about the Leona. Leona! Leona. Leona. So that's just the kill lane. I you know we see yeah. a lot of iterations of a kill lane, bottle lane, Shen last game. Get Leona this time around, so anyone that locks him through, the passive of Swain being able to bring him back, and then you throw in your never move. This is a lot of CC potential here. So if you're Alistar, you know, gotta watch out a little bit. Yeah, I actually love the lane specifically talking about it from Leona's perspective, because you just gotta land Xenoblade and you're good. Or you can just walk up and hit Q. <laughs> then both of those ways are perfect ways for Swain to instantly drag them back towards him. Leona doesn't have a problem to stick onto a target, instantly gets the Eclipse, and it's all happy days and a sunny day for Leona. I genuinely don't know this matchup just because we've seen Leona into Alistair before, and it's pretty damn good for Alistair. Yeah. You can play the lane passively. If you get hooked in by Leona, just, just get off me. Yeah, you press Q and then you walk up forward and then you w him towards your turret. Mm -hmm. So it's actually really poor for the Leona historically. The reason what I don't understand is when we see Leona lock him in, maybe we see the, 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 the passive coming in from Swain. So he immediately gets the lockdown mm -hmm. right from the E so you don't get an opportunity as an Alistar to just, you know, press the rage Q button. He's like, get off of me. I mean, in fighting games terms, I actually think it's a true combo. Because like you, you go with Xenoblade, and that's yep. like a tiny, tiny stun. If you instantly follow up with the Swain, because it is technically a root, then you follow up with Leona's Q or the Never Move, and exactly. you're just you're done, kid. That's what is surprising. Like that's what I really want to see out of this lane, because these guys must have run it frequently for the Leona to come into this matchup. They've had a lot of iterations of the Swain Shan, Swain Alistar. This time it's gonna be Swain and Leona. Maybe that's the play. I mean, knowing that you're picking into the Alistar. You have to recognize that whenever Leona keys in, that's the you know that's the problem that she has. Yep. But Swain may be able to cover that. The other thing is like I actually quite like Leona into a pick, any pick that has a spell shield because you Xenoblade and yes they don't get rooted, but you still go to them, you still jump yes. on top of them, and then you've got a Q, uh, and if you town your W, you can use that as well, and like then you also have Swain on top of that. So it's actually really nice into both of those picks in the bottom lane. Yeah, I really am. I'm feeling it for the the, the, the Sivir. You know, Sivir's going to get a lot of things thrown at her. She can spell shield one, but you I don't know about the rest. spell shield them all. We'll see how they're going to cope as we head into the second game right here. We'll see if BLG can sweep it, but I really like the draft coming in from Suning. Yeah, it feels like Suning have uh, gotten themselves their own Yelly Man. Because uh, they, they definitely saw JD, they, uh, we had our e-commerce wars, and we had, it was actually Suning Day. We had the Suning mascot in the studio. Um, and since then, they've had a very loud chance. you got to find a way to hype up your audience, because they're only as loud as the person that's really hyping them up. It's true. Yeah. JD got them around them. I understand that JD for so long as a team were struggling getting into the top four of their own conference, naturally being in the East. Uh, so... Fans were coming in fairly slowly. No notable names in the organization, but they started coming through. The wins started coming. Mm -hmm. They already had the cult following based off of the yeah. JD guy alone. Yeah. So they've been People doing like well winners. Themselves. They do. Yeah. Everyone likes a winner. It's always nice to be a fan of a team who consistently wins. Let's take a look at the keystones right here. Some pretty standards across the board. The only thing I'm going to make a point of is the Predator Gragas. We've been seeing a lot exclusively. I love I it. Say. Coming in from Spirit is so fun to just watch, by the way. And then the Lethal Tempo Sivir. So, topical, because she's getting jumped on. Yeah, this is level one, by the way. And that's the combo you were talking about. You and actually maybe bit off uh, a little bit more than he can chew. Uh, level one is typically not when you want to engage as Leona, but he was really hungry to get the combo to go off. Of course, he's alongside the Swain. I wonder if he knew that Alistar W in the first rank, because usually it's the Q first. So for Alistair, get W. 
Didn't expect the Alistair to be like, all right, I'm moving around you. Yeah. But that's an adaptation on an adaptation. You know, Rhodes saw this matchup and he was just like, all right. And he was like, teleport behind Leona. Nothing personal, <laughs> nothing personal. So hits him back into the tower. It's like, well, there you go. He's never going to get to do that ever again, though, in his laning phase. So uh, enjoy it while it lasts, Rhodes. Enjoy this one little bit of a... Wait, did he actually just get Ignite in the lane? Was that the first thing uh, he Yeah, got? I think Angel just picked up like Ignite, yeah. You remember the days where uh, Ignite used to give you 5 AD and AP? So you yeah. just walk into lane and ignite your opponent? It reminded me of the Reginald style of yeah. trading mid, where you just immediately trade on, like, you're playing Zed. Start with Ignite, and you just go for the flat trade because yeah. of the AD that it gives you. Hit him with the Ignite, hit him with the blue card. Excellent. And, uh, there you go, job done. You just that's had to put in the blue card. card. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned the name, and I felt like I had to. You know, I always think about now. Huh? Okay, oh, okay. It, it applied. <laughs> it got in. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Um. I always think about nowadays how many of our viewers actually, you know, used to watch in season one, season two, because we're in season eight. We've had a lot of seasons, Rats. We've had a lot of seasons. Well, Yoon chose another bad time to go in right there. Oh, 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 what a poll coming in from Fury. We'll see if we can... Nope. Do a barrel roll. Oh, that's a good emote. I haven't seen the Tarek one before. I like it coming in from Road. Always an innovator. Of course, the flash from Greg is just to get him in position, but Fury is like, get the hell out of here. Uh, the damage not do too, done too much from Yanhua, if his Q is all right, then uh, I think that Swain played it really well. Fury, of course, body blocking for the Leona for quite some time, but yep. it doesn't matter, the damage is going to pile up. He actually pulled the Gragas away. He was like, get off my Leona. <laughs> get away. Yeah. Um, so we'll go down in the end, but I still like the attempt from Fury. First blood goes to BLG right here. Uh, Hacker is going to annihilate the Gromp. Also, talking about the borders right now, you can see on your screen, this is a new voting system that is in the LPR being premiered uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was told that it only goes up to gold. Now, I see I a see platinum black. border. Yep, I see I a, a silver one right here. And this is the fans at home in, uh, in the Chinese clan can uh, go and vote on the players. And also, it's impacted by what they do in game as well. So if they take uh, a big objective, like a Baron, or take down the tower, that also adds their own personal counter. Oh. So you can see right now that Amazing Day, uh, clearly platinum. Yeah, I actually platinum. Can't, is that plat or, or diamond? I actually can't tell because you can see at the top BLG are plat. It's a teal 100% level. plat. It's definitely plat. If it goes to diamond and the producers in the back are like, not possible! Well, it told me it couldn't go past gold. So. There we go. Already, it's uh, <laughs> he's ascended past uh, gold. That's what happens. Good job. You ever tell a Saiyan that he can't stuck. do it? No. Nope. You can't, hey, Saiyan, you can't break those cups. Yeah. You're breaking those cups. Yeah, 100%. So, amazing J. Obviously, a fan favorite from BLG. Yeah. 100% they won the last game. So if any votes, votes are coming towards BLG, it's all in Amazing J's falling. Oh, all yeah. of it's in his back pocket. Yeah. I mean, he is he is the guy, you know. If, if a BLG, you know, anime team, he's the anime protagonist. You know? He's just like, you, you can't do it, Amazing J. There's no way you can make worlds. And he's like, watch this. Makes the run. Got it. Also, love as Leona, you can, uh, if you miss your E, as long as you do it over menus, it's like, I was just setting up the minions for my for my support for my AD carry. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard Six to support. believe because at that situation, I don't even think he was trying to aim for the kill. I yeah. mean, for the engage. Probably just getting the push across. That's what I believe. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, 100% of the time. Yeah, 100%. One yeah. thing to make note of, of course, even though the kill went into uh, Mianhua's back pocket, a lot of goals in hackers because he's been counter jungling as you mentioned when he got the drop. He continued that. So we're at a point where he got the immediate tier mat. Great matchup for him regardless. So in this case, even though Hacker's going up against somebody that's got the kill, he actually has a lead for himself really early on. Yeah, I mean, that's the life of a Trundle pretty much. You know, always the duelist. Uh, Substigate by itself, I mean, especially if you're into a tank matchup, it's just like, nice build you've got there. It's my build now. Yeah. And then you just win the trade. You just do so much Good really sleep. early on. There we go. That one applied immediately. He's got an exhaust now. Wonderful. The Phoenix is having a grand old time in the mid lane. Yeah. At least he's not playing into the Kali. They did manage to ban that one away. So you get into a position where, uh, if you're BLG, think about what the composition is trying to achieve. This is a very late game composition. Once again, they're trying to achieve that. And it's another take of Camille Galio, where the, usually Camille's going through the jungle, but if you're Amazing J, you pick it up for yourself. And Camille as a top laner is actually coming right back up. So you're in a position where BLG, they pick a fight. It's a winning fight. Works well for them. In this case, they can actually try and fend this one off. It's party time. Spell Shield's not going to save you, Jinjao. Drop down. It's already to 10%. 
Rhodes gonna get pulled into the team, and it's just an absolute meat grinder right here. Soon in game, this is way too much CC. Yeah, they just didn't see uh, uh, Angel coming, honestly, going straight through the river. No voids to catch him out. Mm -hmm. So Chin Chow didn't even have the reaction to press E when the Streepy Pubble Trouble Trouble Bubble. Bubble Trouble. Trouble Trouble. Tru I'm just I mean, gonna say a whole bubble lot of trouble. There was some trouble with that bubble. It's a lot of trouble. Yeah. Didn't see it in time. Got hit by it. Had to be, uh, back away. So Road ultimately died from it. Really tricky situation now. Angel has full control of the wave. Yeah, that was real unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I like the attempt there from Jin Zhao. It's just like, I'm bubbled. Let's see if the spell shield works. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> one of us is dying. I'm sorry, Road. It's going to be you. Yeah. So one to one right now. Uh, and that kill went also over to Leona. So it's going to be a very rich dude. He's going to be happy about that. Of course, Leona, I think, is still level five right now. So if you were to guess, yes. I know my eyes yes. are still deceiving me, you're right. Yep. Still level five. So try and redo that gank again, and it's actually going to be super easy to get the kill on towards Jin Zhao. So no cleanse up, should be up by the next time we see another fight towards the bottom lane. But there's just so much follow up that even though he, let's say, the Sivir does end up getting the spell shield across, don't see him really getting away from that much follow up. Angel with the secure. Wow. Ooh, flashing away from that one. That was a real flash coming out from Angel. Road finding himself in the up, upper side of the map. You never really see it coming. Uh, teams like this, going up against BLG, you never see Road coming when he ends up going for those roams. Angel recognized there were people there, didn't see how many people were in the area, so ends up having to blow his flash. So Jin Zhao's used to this by this point. He's going to be able to clear this up easily. Yep. Definitely said op right there, because I was trying to combine top and upper, and it came out as op. Um, I guess that would be... I kind of went Gangnam style, so uh, yeah. I, maybe that's what it is in Korea. It's the uh, up side of the map. I'm not a fan of this joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up front here. <laughs> so um, I, just, I do not appreciate I, you this You know joke. a joke that I don't appreciate? What? Um, Zoe picking up redemption off of the floor. Ah, that's a good joke. Uh, that's a uh, no. good joke. Oh? Athena? Something's going on right here. Oh, he spotted uh, him. Yeah, there's, there's a thief in my mansion. You know what? He doesn't know how many people. Nope. But, but he's in case. Okay. He's going to walk in anyway. It's kind of like if you were to look into your closet, you don't see a monster, but you're pretty damn sure there's a monster there. Guess yep. what? He was there the all along. Yep. Turn around and he's right behind you. Oh, Road. That was not the time to do that. There we go. Jin Zhao's going to do what he can, but Road, of course, does have his ultimate, so he's going to walk off a bit of this damage, but he's just CC'd to high heaven. There we go, that's really what we were talking about getting into the game, the combination, immediate pull as the Zenith Blade comes through. So there was no response that Road was actually going to be able to output. Really, really well Hard done. doomed. Yep. Sad There's nothing you can do. I mean, what of an adaptation as well, because you would see a Leona being drafted into an Alistair and you'd be like, oh, about this one, champ. But the combination specifically with Swain, because it's an instantaneous coming off of the Zenith Blade, it just makes it such a good combo. I mean, I can't believe I haven't seen this before. Yeah, we just don't see a lot of Leonas. Not a lot of people that want to go <laughs> on to the That's fair, Europe actually, yeah. I mean, if you want to see Leonas competitively, you go to the LPL. Yeah, you do. Yeah. you got Ming. He's obviously a big Leona player. 100%. Brought it in. The uh, Leona Nocturne combo is definitely a fun one. Yeah. Road is another a few times. Not that often, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you would go some. towards Bard at times. No one's playing Bard these days, though. He's always a playmaker. Play Rakan, Bard, Alistair. Yeah. Zoom out. Zoom out. He's also, yeah, 100%. Oh, no, Road. Goodbye. I mean, this isn't a replay, folks. He's about to probably die in the exact same place he died last time. So he has to walk all the way around the pillar. And Fury, he's going to drain him to death. He doesn't even give him the ultimate. He's like, you're not even worth it. I'm just going to slowly drain you. Yep. Full soul fragment. Says you're not worth it. Not worth the time. I'm not going to blow you up. I'm just going to sap you. Really unlucky. Uh-oh. Get out of there! Oh, flash taunt coming out there from Athena. Minhua wasn't in range though. He's going to follow up. He's going to burn his own flash. Angel low off this one. He's going to flash out of the way and just give him the cask. It's going to be a kill over to Minhua. Can't run away from it. At this point, no laner has actually gotten used to the Predator Gragas. Because it's just too fast. He just runs at you. You think you get away. But he's like, actually, I've still got the movement speed. And does a lot of damage. I have the AP as well. So I can just throw the ultimate, not as a repositioning tool, just yep. to blow you up. I mean, Don't this get is, used to it. This is the thing about effective ranges, right? You know, effective ranges are something you, you start learning about when you're like, you know, gold, platinum, that type of thing, where I if you're in lane and it's just like, how far away do I need to be where my opponent can necessarily kill me? Where's, where's the kill range? And with Gragas, you're like, well, 
he's big, he's fat, he's slow. He does a bit of damage early, but that's really it. Predator just changed the whole game. And then you add AP on top of that, and it's just like, oh, he can kill me from uh, two screens away. Okay, that, that seems fair. Yeah, so that's a big one. Kill range, and if they have the lethal, they can be at the kill just yep. based off 30% just AP. It. Just immediately just throw it out on top of his head. So they'll get used to it. As we'll see more Predator builds come through, but it's always fun to see the meta change this quickly. Uh, because as soon as it does, you realize you need to change your own, I guess, priority on how the lane's up. Oh, he's going to blow him up. So sleep. Yeah. And uh -oh. still, even if you kill him, he still does a lot of damage, Zoe. Uh, Fury <laughs> now under attack. Great flash coming through, though. Dodges out of Rhodes' headbutt. Fury may not have wanted to actually pull him in. He got the soul fragment, so you know what worth. Worth at the end of the day, but he pulled the damn Alistar closer to his head. Why do you got to do that? It was a Mad Max joke in there, somewhere. something something Fury wrote. Uh, I can't find it there. As per usual, I do not understand this Mad Max okay. reference. <laughs> That's me with a recent one, Raz. I, just don't I know that movies. you don't get like, you know, 10 year old pop culture, but... I don't watch movies uh, at all. Apparently not. People are talking about Pacific Rim, and I'm like, I don't know about that one. Oh. It's fine. We're okay. I didn't even know there was a Pacific Rim 2. Yeah, I heard it wasn't very good though. The first one was sick though. Okay, that's uh, good. The only cell that you need for Pacific Rim 2 is uh, there is a robot who has a rocket in their arm to punch harder. Solar Flare down, Fury turning around, pops the Ascension, but he's dying very quickly. It's golden time as Athena rockets down from the middle lane. Oh. He's going to get that kill. Yun under attack, but he goes golden as well. But Hacker, one versus three, now two versus three. Jin Zhao getting chased down. The Troll King's angry. Oh. It's going to be from downtown, a ball over the wall for another kill. Going in for the three-point shot. That was well done from Angel. Honestly, they're still on the side of the map. They could maybe go for the tower here. A little bit more gold in their pockets. And Angel got himself an Ignite, but he also got himself a kill. Three, two, five currently soon leading this game in terms of kills and about to put some hurt onto the bottom main tower. It's really well done. I mean, it, it was first you know, brought by disaster, Fury in front of four people. That was pretty rough from Fury. But enough people were Whoa. rotating in time. You know who has taken it to the head? He's good. Oh, get Whoa, out of there, comes Angel. Give him the Super Soaker. He needs to go. Go home. You're wet. Dry off. I mean, he's literally in a... Is that an arctic suit? I don't really know. It's, not, the, it's, not, the it's not the scuba diving suit. It was definitely built to be wet. one. All right, speaking of that. Hex flash. Rode flash. wants this fight. So he goes in immediately. It's already a 2v1. At this point, Fury's taking up too much damage. At this point, you want to get out of here because the Galio has already set the pace for the fight. Issue is, Sony Gaming have already, already brought a few people here, and Gragas is nowhere seen. He's nowhere to be seen so far up to the top side of the map that BLG cannot rely on him for this fight. So if BLG had that extra member, if Mianhua was plugged into the play, excellent, you've won the fight. Issue is, wasn't the case. BLG takes the fight without their jungler, and it looks pretty bad for them. Indeed. And I really, I, I never attribute the uh, early game to BLG and, and skirmishes. I'm just like, ah, this is a, just a solid 30-70, you know, not even like a 50-50. It's probably not going to go well for BLG. That's why I was ple pleasantly surprised watching, you know, Mianhua just kind of tear it up in the jungle right now with this uh, Gragas pick. But uh, yeah, again, BLG kind of back and forth in this early game. Road currently 1-4-1. One, one. He's failing the driving test quite badly, uh, and now he's going to walk back to the tower. At least he... You take a second chance at the driver's test. I've taken my second one. That's when I passed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Two times the chance. I, I don't know if that's okay. something that you really admit on air, but... Okay. I was one point off from failing. <laughs> Wait, on the second time? Yes. All right. <laughs> he was very... He was a strict man. I was actually having a great time, and he was like, you're driving too slow. I was like, what? <laughs> what? I'm just being safe. I was in a this is a pedestrian area, man. friend. But, you um, know, if Road was a teacher, you'd be like, keep yeah. driving. <laughs> Go fast. Go Accelerate. Quickly. Pedal to the metal. And that's the problem here with Mianhua. Mianhua wants to be that slow road. You know, like, we're doing yeah. okay, guys. You don't have to. Why is there a fight happening? Yeah, but it's like, go faster. Run. <laughs> so that's why with BLG, it feels like you're the new jungler coming into the squad. You have to play the tune that your team is singing. Yeah. And oftentimes, it's being sung by Road, the teacher. It is, he's yeah. He's the instructor here. And he's, he's like, madman. you're playing it incorrectly. Follow me. Follow my lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like I've heard that story before, where it's just like, yeah, my driver teach was just a bit of an a-hole, you know, and <laughs> like he was telling me to do the specific thing in a specific way. Yeah. Um, and everyone just has their own thing. It's like speed up, slow down, and it's like, well, really, you just have to adapt to your teacher, and in this case, adapt to road. 
Because if you don't true. follow the road in, he's follow, just going to jump in and die, isn't he? Follow the road. Follow the road. Follow, follow the road. Hashtag follow the road. Yeah. That should be the BLG mod. We have keep your dreams for Ooh, Team WE. Um, follow the road. Should there be we BLGs. There we go. That's I'll, uh, I'll suggest that to the BLG uh, manager. There it's a great tip for any new jungler that comes into the roster. You might be thinking that they're bringing you in for your, your skills, yeah. your, your communication. Yeah, perhaps. But yeah, there's only one thing you got to do when you come into BLG. Follow the road. Stand straight. And the road is He's top lane. To the top side of the map. <laughs> yeah. Who's behind him? Who's on the road? Nobody. That's Nobody. The no one's on the road. What are you doing on this road? That's why at, after this game, Road is going to be like, you guys should have followed me. Mm, Jin Zhao had the right idea. You know why I called myself Road? So people can follow me. No yeah. one's doing it. Bottom lane, Fury. I'm not going to talent by himself, so hopefully BLG can make something happen on the top, 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 top side. No, nah, there's no way. Chow out, that was a lot of damage right now. Oh, no, Rose right behind him. And he doesn't even get the assist. That feels bad. Hacker, that's what chasing around Mianhua right now. He's still pretty squishy. He's been building essentially pure damage. Flashes out of the way of the bubble. Oh. But in comes the Swain. And he's managed to latch onto Jin Zhao. Angel from the bottom side. And Yun right behind him. Road about to juke behind his tower. And Hacker, he's feeling going in. But the rest of the team wants out. Yeah, I don't think Road wanted to take a head, but Pulverizer going in there. I don't even know what play he saw coming into it. Maybe he just wanted to protect his team because everyone was getting picked up by the Swain, uh, never move. That was surprising that Jin Zhao got hit by it because it was definitely going towards Miaohua. But you're now in a position as BLG where you're top side of the map, the enemy team is taking Rip Trail from underneath you and I don't think you could take this fight. We're gonna attempt something right here. Mianhua stepping up, wants to get towards the Herald, down to 1,000 HP, in comes the hero's entrance, gonna be splitting up the fight, but Hack's already gone golden. Smite comes down, I don't even know who got that one, what? as Yoon jumps over the wall, he's gonna be locking down Fury's aggressor. Meanwhile, in the pit, it's just an absolute massacre in the arena. Athena jumps over the wall, and I was Amazing Jade versus Yoon right now. This is a bit of a weird trade, and Yoon, I don't even know why he's staying around, because Amazing Jade will win this every single day of the no week. Shot. Turns around, lands the Q, flashes after, Precision New Protocol. Challenger. Fury, great hook coming through. Hook shot, gonna be following after, and Force Lightning will drop him. Understandably, if I were to go into you know, being Observer for the first time, I wouldn't know where to start with that one either. Yeah. Observer chose the fight on the bottom side while there was a much larger fight happening around the pit itself. Mm -hmm. It was insane to you see. You choose one and your teacher be like, go faster or go to the other one. <laughs> yeah. That was insane, honestly. Of course, Amazing J on the bot side, trying to see if he can get someone off. Really pushing Yoon away from joining the rest of his team. I was insane. Now, hopefully we get another replay, here we go. So there was no reason for BLG to pick this fight. I, I want to make that one clear because in this position, there is no way they should have been able to if there was a front to back. Issue is, I mean, they came in close knit. Hacker goes in for an assassination on towards Jin Zhao. I think Sunin Gaming naturally, I think they got the Rift Herald while still taking the team fight victories. BLG is acting as much more desperate than they should be. It feels like that, right? Yeah, it does feel like they're making just plays that they don't necessarily need to almost desperate plays. I think you could definitely use that word right there. And BLG, uh, who actually picked up? Road got it, of course he got it. Road, Road managed to pick there up the Herald. There we so go. we got something in the I end the with BLG. Um, uh, if you actually, if you had to pick a player out of this entire game, you'd be like, okay, there was a mess at the Herald. Pick a player who picked it up. You'd be at Road 100% every yeah, single Road time. You know, he's, he's the one. He's an objective focused, uh, objective focused man. Yeah. Amazing Jay's got his own objective here. He is, and it's Angel. You've got to come back, buddy. Gives him the ultimatum. Three versus one. And uh, what do you know? The three one. A lot of people just. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to follow this one up. Oh, yeah. Hacker wants this one. Places down the pillar onto Athena. He's forced to back into the mid lane. He's a pretty tanky man, but eventually he will drop to the subjugate. Mianhua, also by himself, has been abandoned by his comrade. He's also going to die to the Swain. And the kill to Fury, 450 gold in the bank. He's a pretty rich, pretty rich bird man. Yeah, this is why you don't set up the banner, the ceremony on a ship. No, there's no congratulations here. You still need to find that exit strategy. There was nothing there for BLG. They got the nice kill underneath the tower at the very least, but they couldn't finish the job by getting out cleanly. So no way to follow up with the tower mid lane. In fact, if you're sitting in game, you can try and aim for that one yourself. Try for it. I mean, Shao has placed down multiple watermelons, and uh, Road isn't a big fan of the fruit, so he's going to walk away from this one. Uh, just taking a look at the gold totals right here. Uh, again, that's Swain, pretty big. It's currently a thousand odd gold over Jin Zhao just alone. And for me, the most important thing is the fact that he was able to immediately land second item 
fully gotten his rod of ages in a I mean, 10 minutes into it. Yeah, fully so it's stacked. fully stacked. Zonia's locked down so he can actually engage quite frequently himself. The gargoyle has stone plates there for hacker. So team fighting should be there for Sunning Gaming a lot more confidently than BLG. Expect so. I mean, they also have a 504 Trundle, which is uh, you that's know, nice. I, I reckon that's going to help somewhat. Yeah, already has its gargoyles. I mean, Shop you know, a few that's, also, that's also pretty great. Give him a good bite. Yeah, and uh, PLG right here, kind of on the ropes, one might say. We're calling for that third game. I reckon that might be on the horizon right here. See the discipline coming through from Sunning Gaming. So, all members have control wards, every single one of them. No one has a random recipe that they think that it's going to be worthwhile in the long of things but no for them every single of them one of them is going to be looking towards the i'd say the bottom side of the map I'm sure it's a cloud dragon but they can actually set up for mid lane outer turret now what's on your screen is the nerf towards oh, this, the perfect no. timing so perfect timing for eight minutes to ten minutes of reverting that timeline for you know random expectation you would expect people to actually just not get it anymore if you were to watch the last series that's what <coughs> got it fun. on trundle yeah so, twice uh, yeah, and then sold it. Yep. So he didn't even actually build into the Gargoyle Stone Plate. He's like, nah, I don't, I don't need it. Yep. <laughs> he also took biscuits, actually. Yep. Uh, and the reason I said, oh no, is because Road tried to activate the Herald oh. in front of Sooning, in front of five members of Sooning. And what did Trundle do? Boop. Someone. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. 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 So you were distracted by the changes eight to ten minutes. They threw the, a graphic uh, at me. What am I, I know, supposed no, to do? I know. That's fair. Raz is fair. But my eyes were on the prize, much like Road. That's true. Uh, before he just entered the <laughs> shadow <Shady> away. <laughs> Unlucky. See, he's a man of the plan, not the man of the execution. That's got to go to someone else. Yeah, That's probably Amazing Jay's job. Definitely dropped yeah. Shelly down a well. Yeah. Unlucky. Oh, shout out. He's not going to get uh, belly bopped, uh, but he is about to get ultimate bopped. And actually just dropped him in range so he could just hit him with his water pistol. This is not going well currently for men who are... Oh, flash oh! out of my fury. He wants him dead. He wants a real dead. Fat man's on the menu. There we go. I mean, Fury's played a lot of Swain games. He oh, knows yeah. his limits on that one. So getting the flash yep. in so confidently knows he's going to get the kill on that. So yep. Mian no Mianhua on the bottom side of the map. That should be Sunning Gaming just cleaning up the towers. Look at how far Athena is. Sure, he has teleport, but he ain't going to be here in time. Uh, mid lane about to drop right here, Sooning. And they're just cascading across the map. Two towers con right now, both dropping. Don't Dual break control up, wards. Don't break up the control ward relationship. No. Nope. Leave let them there them, forever. Let them have a good time. Yep. It never gets. No! Oh! Rest in peace, Barry. Oh! Let them Sally go at dead the same too. time. Honestly, you can't leave yeah. one being you know, broken hearted for that I long. Know. The game. Yeah, make it fast. Make yeah. it quick. Yeah. Oh. Rest in peace, uh, Barry and Sally, uh, 2018 to 2018. There we go. Yeah. They don't have very long lives. They really don't. I mean, some do. if you have a control ward up for, I think it's past three minutes, it gets an award, a Medal of Valor. Have you ever read that, Raz? Where you, you click on the ward and it has like a, a buff that it gets? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. If it survives for like, I think I think it's three minutes. No, you but you BS me a lot. No, no, this is actually a real one. This isn't even me. <laughs> this okay, isn't okay, even okay, me okay. trolling, yeah. That's pretty sick. Yeah. There so next go. time you place down, place down one in your like base, and just leave, leave it there for like ten minutes, and then click it. So it's ten minutes is the magic number. No, it's like three, I think. Three? Yeah, and it's, it's like three long. minutes. Yeah, it's not that long, but I mean, it it gets uh yeah. I mean, not many wards survive very long. Those two wards survive there for like fifteen seconds. So three minutes in the whole realm of League of Legends, that's quite a lot. Well, that control ward that he just placed, that's actually oh the t wards you just mentioned. yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Barry and Sally, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Barry and Sally. I don't I don't really regard them as wards at this point. What are they? Fodder? Wards lies matter, Raz. They're citizens. In my yeah, heart. they're citizens of the Rift. Yep. There are many uh, denizens. Um, Road kind of barely counts. Uh, he's getting caught once again in the mid lane. He's just having a bad day, to be honest. He's got the second level of his ultimate, and he might actually just be able to walk his... Oh, no, no. The Ender really wants him dead. Amazing Jay's into the back line, one versus You're three. Alone. And no, but he's got Ganiel with him. Everybody, jump bumper down. Oh! He's looking for another kill. That's going to be a two-for-one trade right here. Road, still alive and killing a ward on brand right now. As Athena, two versus one, lands the taunt. Visions of Empire, oh, what a pillar. Lands up onto two right there. Athena, maybe sacrificing himself for the cow. Hacker. Hacker is so tanky. He is so t I mean, he's on his last legs, but somehow just refuses to die. Shout out. Yet another oh. knockup comes in from Road. 
the hero of the day. His AD carry is dead. He's dead. Thumbs up. Hacker with the kill. You got the t pillar right on top of the, the Sivir's death, of course. The tombstone right there. That was a long fight. But it was really just BLG diving straight into the back line, netting the kills, and trying to save Private Athena. It was very difficult. It didn't end up happening because if you play a long enough fight, you're going to have at least three pillars being placed in succession. So I don't know. It ain't worth your time. That should be a Baron here for Sunning Gaming. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm lying, by the or way. Or maybe Just not. Kidding. Amazing J here to sweep up the mess. He's on janitorial duties. And uh, yeah, that's. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even look at their HP bars. Oh my god, BLG. I mean, the observers didn't either. We just assumed it was going to be a they Baron. They were confident, by the way. They were super. They were yeah. like immediately towards Baron. Yeah. I just want to see a replay of them taking Baron. Not this nonsense. But of course, we're going to do it. So, first pillar, get up out of there. On top of Rogue, he has to flash because with how much damage that has been really just raining on top of his head. So, if that uh, Leona stun actually ended up landing, Rogue's out of the fight, he's dead. But immediately, Amazing J, Athena, really saved this fight for BLG. But I already mentioned, CDR on the trundle pillar, pretty sure. Athena might think he's going to be able to get out of there, but wreck the pillar. Road thinks he can chase it back. And so from this point forward, it's actually just impossible for BLG to be able to take this win. Even getting the flash out of Jinja out from that one. Yep. I mean, to be fair, Road landed a pretty insane amount of, I think it was like three or four Double knockups right there coming out from Road, even though he was the pure focus at the start of the fight. So props to him. They will, in the end, lose the fight. Um, but still, it almost looked like a turnaround. I mean, like I liked what Amazing J was looking for right there. Athena on top of him lands multi-man knockups, and with the amount of CC, it was like, I maybe just should turn around. Maybe this actually should be the time. But wasn't the case. Sunny Gaming come out with the uh, five kills, though Baron is still alive, and uh, that is just because Baron is apparently a raid boss. But it is the challenge you have to take. Both these teams are going to try and rise to the occasion. Should be Sunny Gaming, by the way, the one that can actually easily take it. They have so much in terms of being able to stop Gragas from getting into the pit and also being able to start the fight themselves. So they shouldn't have any problems when it comes to picking up Baron in front of the field. I don't like them A-ramming a bit. Yeah, I mean, we see this a lot nowadays in the LPL, especially around the middle of the pack. Teams don't really know what to do. Right now, your Sunning Gaming should have the uh, GP on one of these lanes. At least having a decent enough push in the bottom lane so it can get slow pushing in your favor. Because problem is, uh, Amazing J can easily get this push across, come back mid, uh, get the flank. He has a lot of flexibility here. Yeah, I mean, he's essentially just disappeared into Fog of War right here, and soon just don't know where he is. I mean, he could be bot lane, could be in the jungle, could be in the river, I don't really know. But right now, they are going to turn themselves towards the lesser objective, which is the Dragon, so that's going to be nice for themselves, but they're not really making a huge amount of headway into BRG. Yeah, these Dragons aren't really important for the fights themselves. you got a Cloud Dragon. Sure, it's uh, in combat movement speed. It's yeah. very minimal, just because it's the one. They themselves a pick and mix, really. Ocean Dragon, Earth Dragon, team fights happen. It's not going to be because, be because of the dragons unless yeah, we get yeah. Elder Dragon. So we're at a state right now where Sunning Gaming are not really pushing their cause. Yeah, it's, it's actually a little bit sad because now that we have three of those dragons, Infernals aren't going to spawn. So if you want to combat dragons, well, you're going to have to wait till Elder. Uh, which luckily is going to be the next one, hey, but it's not, a, it's not an Infernal. You really want those oh, stats right now. Oh, there's going to be a flash out of the way of that Solar Flare, but a flash for an ultimate, especially Solar Flare on that relatively low cooldown. Not these fights, too bad. These fights are getting really easy for Sunning Gaming to pull off. Take a look at it. 707 out of uh, Hacker. Right now they're sky high. Getting to a point in these team fights where if you are BLG, you're just expending flashes. No way about it. Uh, you're expending flashes, getting into a fight, you're just in a disadvantage. The one thing you can lay your hope on is completely in Athena. Uh, of course, last engage that he was able to do, you got, you know, blew up the back half mm -hmm. of it. Swain's out of the fight gone. If you can get that across again, they have a great combination to just have that much burst that they were now reliant on. Yeah, that's fair. Also, uh, we're in a game where Sivir exists. So, uh, you know, uh, 5 million farm Sivir is always an opportunity. Prepare for trouble. Make it spell shielded. Jinjan's going to get out of this one. The hacker is completely by and lonesome, but uh, he's a trundle with gargoyles and subjugate running, so he's not going to die in a hurry. I believe Road just flashed in the back half of that as well. Yep, Ro did end up flashing that one. Interesting because, of course,
Jin Zhao eating the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Really well done from him. Does he use the spell shield at a proper time? But here comes a re engage. Road comes in, looks for the knockup onto Fury. Athena's here right now with Amazing J. He's trying to actually put on some damage with these watermelons, but uh, Mian Hua locked up by the bubble. He's going to be good, but now soon they actually have the uh, in the track. He got mid priority, but, but the LG no minions. Can easily push. For, yeah, okay. So you can already see them repositioning right back in the center of things. Because if they go way too far in towards uh, the uh, inner tower, then BLG can do the exact same thing. And there's nothing stopping BLG from this area. Remember, they have Storm Razors and Static Shiv, I believe, from Jin Zhao. So his wave clear is absurd. It's actually just obnoxious. Yep. No! Oh! Instant clear. Road finds the double knockup. But hang on, BLG are actually quite a ways away. And Rhodes actually just dropped himself down to half. Still feeling this fight, though. Amazing J right into the back lines. Ultimatum down. And here comes a massive Galio ultimate onto four. Gets the knockup, gets the kill. Now Fury locked down by Athena. That'll be a second kill coming Ooh. through from Jin Zhao. He's going to find himself a third of the fight as they all walk into the boomerangs. Three for one. That was so well done from Amazing J to just get right in the middle of it. You recognize how tanky he was. Came out of the fight, one HP, still alive. A bit of hyperbole. I think he was like 50 HP, but nonetheless, he was pretty one damn HP. low. One HP. 0.01 HP. Didn't think it was possible, but they packed My that in. My God. You can get into the percentage. BLG starting off in the Baron. Three of them here, and Shao Ao is alive and kicking. But Amazing J with an army, an army of chickens behind him. Gonna jump onto both of these two players. And actually, BLG. Oh, that is a lot of damage onto right. AJ. They need to actually start body blocking for him, otherwise, another pistol is about to clock him. No, he's gonna be good. So that's the new worry now. This gank flank coming out of Shao Ao is gonna demolish you at this point. Uh, Omi starts getting his items, and you already see the damage he's able to do onto Amazing J. That's a really squishy composition coming out of BLG. So sure, you can get the gauge across. Sure, you can maybe kill out Fury or, uh, in this case, Angel. Mm -hmm. It's the GP that's going to be doing so much damage in the back half of these team fights. So multiple threats from Sunin Gaming as the game goes on. Much harder for BLG to deal with. Yeah, real unfortunate that GP was alive at the end of that. Otherwise, that probably would have been the Baron. But uh, Road, yeah, real hungry for a fight to start. But that barrel completely zoned BLG at the start. Take a look at this, because as the fights get in, Amazing J immediately into the thick of things, just trying to create a great occasion, or at least opening for Galio to come in. Below up, look how low these HP, uh, the HP for the team is. So Sivir can just walk up, net a triple kill fairly easily. Full HP just means that the setup for the fight was the most important thing. Yeah, uh, Road went off on a bit of Rogue mission there at the end as yes, well. Uh, <laughs> it's like the start of Rogue One. He just like went and died for some reason. But really, really nice uh, kill there from Chao Al. Seen too many Hollywood movies. Like, I'll get him at the flank. Didn't need to do it. I really, really did not. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, you stay here. Oh, that you stay pillar. Put. Disgusting coming in for that trundle. That's what I love to see out of it. Because you have to go up against enough Camilles to be comfortable actually throwing up the trundle pillar. If you do it at the right time as it's coming out, or at least when she's moving towards it, you got her. But if you do it at the wrong time, she's already she's gone. Out, she, yeah. Yeah. So you got to time it properly. She did it properly, exactly on point. Good job. He hacked him out of the air. Right into the, the mainframe. Yeah. Incredible. Well, that was just a nice pick. Didn't really turn it into anything, but uh, it was pretty good. And it also means that it just... You know, it takes Amazing J off the board for a little bit, and BLG harder for them to actually push down the bottom side. Suning decided to convert this though, looking towards the Baron. It's dying quite slowly because it's actually got a lot of health at this stage in the game, and Vian Hua is over the wall. Words are down. He knows it's happening. Barrel roll for Vision. Vins They're burning Empire. it. Dodging out of this one, pops the ultimate, jumps in, secured by Trundle. And now the fight ensues. Instant kill onto the Grax and BLG have to get away from this one. Jinjao already low. Pops the spell shield. Expect the dash to come through. But Hackers right here, flashing over the pillar. But Road, everyone is dying one by one from BLG. Finland Empire once again doesn't tag the Sivir, but the entire team is dead. No Sunin well. Gaming looking for the kill shot. Yeah, Jinjao's got to get out of here, but they're way too fast. Wait a minute. Oh, the flash, the pillar, the kill, 600 gold. And Sunin Gaming, this is theirs. Yeah, this got to be game here. Sunin Gaming could just have a parade straight through mid lane. Five objectives that would be able to take down the Nexus. But really well done. And they knew they got Amazing J down. Miahua is very squishy, so if he commits to the steal, he's basically calling himself out of the fight. Yep. Make the call here for BLG. Of course, 
in hindsight is to take the fight rather than try and go for the steal because going for the steal means that you're just going to be saying, yeah, we'll take the Baron, but we'll have three members for the fight. Sooning Gaming knew they put them in checkmate. Yeah, really off of that pick as well. I like the conversion coming in there from Suni. It looked like it was just them going to do nothing. It was just like, all right, cool. We got the pick on the two Amazing Jade. Then not much else, but he was down for like 40 seconds. They realized they had a lot of time to play with. They had the setup and the Baron there as well. Obviously, that's going to be a bit of a gut punch there for the old AJ as we move into our third game. Potentially could have been BLG closing this one out, uh, especially how the last team fight went as well for them. And you can see how close the, the series really is. The BLG are really challenging just based off the team fights. Amazing Jay has got his carries. He's on the Camille, may not be able to get it in game three with how well he's performing. Yep. But he's able to find himself in the back line, consistently pressuring. They didn't have the goal lead, but they were definitely forcing Suning Gaming in an uncomfortable position. They ended up getting back towards the Baron once again, but they got the right fight. Indeed. And the other thing was like, they could actually stall out there because Jin Zhao was obviously becoming monstrous. Yep. You know, we obviously saw the damage when he's untouched in a team fight and Civic can actually get those ricochets off. Did a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage, but uh, wasn't the case in the end. Fortunately, uh, that pick and then Suning Gaming just making decisive plays. You know, we, we spoke about this earlier about Suning, but they are a team who will actually make the plays, you know, either when it's presented to them or to open up an opportunity for themselves. Yeah. I think if you're BLG in this situation, as you mentioned, you could try and elongate the game a little bit and the calls are important here because they found themselves with a really good mid game composition around Camille Gallio and the Gragas as well for the burst but they realized that there was no real damage coming out of the Sivir just yet that if they had a good setting for the fight she can clean up she's a great janitor but if you're in a position where the Sivir has to deal the damage in those fights you can see the Trundle just walking at her because she had he had so much outright resistances that she wasn't going to be able to cover uh, yep. deal with so uh, unfortunate for Jin Zhao because I thought that he had a pretty good game. Even dealing with the fact that Alistar was going up the uh, top side of the map so frequently. Mm -hmm. So good game from him, but it's not going to net you the win. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely unfortunate from a lot of different angles. Uh, I think Rhodes definitely did a bit of redeeming, but also did a lot of dying uh, throughout the game as well. It's so hard, dude. I actually, I have, I give him everything. It's one of those moments where you're going up in, in this game. There's just so much CC threat on top of you. I'm talking about... Zoe, e, and guess who's going to eat that? It's going to have to be the Alistar. Yeah. His carries are ever in a bad position. He has to body block. So a lot of the time, he's putting out his own neck for this. In this fight in particular, take a look at this. He's trying to help Athena out. So he actually doubles down in the team fight. He could leave himself and Athena could die. But they need to st make their ground here. Stand their ground, that is. Yep. So that if the outright fight wins in Sunning Gaming's favor, no Athena, that they can just move towards Baron. It's a really bad position for BLG, so yep. he's thinking about 10 steps ahead. I mean, honestly, in that last team fight there, there was actually a small chance for them to get the full turnaround. Uh, Sivir with the spell shield was actually clutch onto yep. that claw that came through, and it's like, well, Sivir has mana, let's go in once again. You know, so I think Rode actually in the uh, team fights when he was actually alive, actually had pretty good decision making, but the problem was usually because of the decision making leading up to the start of a fight, he'd just be instantly dead. And I yeah. think that happened in bot lane yeah. a lot. There were a lot, for this composition, it's actually difficult looking at the Sunning comp and saying, yeah. who starts this fight? Ultimate answer is Camille Gallio, but Camille's top laning. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the fights were happening in the bottom side of the map. That means you need to commit to the teleport for the Camille. That's not going to happen yep. really early on because she's picked in to deal with the gangplank. So uh, that's why their discovery is that they needed to send the Alistar top lane so they can get some top side fights happening so they can actually make use of their composition. Because if the Alistar is going in for a headbutt pulverize, bad news. You're going to die fairly quickly, and there's no one else that's going to really yeah. fly on top of you. So that was just BLG recognizing pretty late into the game. I would say 10 minutes seems like to me that they need to shift who starts the fight and need to be a lot more the Camille. Yeah. And uh, yeah, our MVP. Uh, let's take a look. Is it Who's Camille? it going to be? Uh, Don't MVP look behind lot. us. Oh, no. Who is it? Oh, it's Hacker. Wow. I didn't know. <laughs> he was a beast. 9-0 Yeah, he was definitely a problem. Uh, I mean, you you kept seeing the kills rack up and him just not dying, and then him with a gargoyles, and then still not dying, and then still doing a billion damage. I was about to say that the, I'm very sad when it comes to these grass because there's no damage to, taken percent. There's It's literally right there. 25% yep. because he was able to walk up to a lot of damage on BLG's side, and he was taking nothing because he rushed down the gargoyle stone plate. So for his uh, mindset, he needed to be up front tank so you can allow his carries to thrive, and he was able to do the job. Yep, he really was. I mean, the Trundle was just a massive part of that win because he was just basically Mundo, but Mundo hits really hard, and yeah. it's Trundle, you know, because he's instead of a, a cleaver, he's got uh, a club.
A really big club. We should, I mean, we name a lot of things. Yeah. We should probably find a way to name the club or the Trundle Pillars, because there was that last team fight that we actually showed that we saw three of them. So I'm not saying give three names, but at least have a name for the Trundle Pillar, because it seems to be the oh. major reason why they're winning these fights. I mean, specifically, if he knocks them out of the air, or are you just talking about the Pillar in general? Just the Pillar in general. It's the pillar, I mean, it's got its name is uh, Pillar of Ice, isn't it? Oh, really? So. Oh yeah. It I is. mean, every ability in the game. All right. Has a I name, mean, you Rance. said you're saying the ability name. Yeah. I'm saying the object itself, but I guess we can call it pillar. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like a pillar of ice. If it's a traditional yeah, yeah, trundle, then it's pillar of filth. Uh, if it's the policeman, then it's uh, a traffic cone. Ah, give um, we need the traffic. The traffic cone. Yeah, you didn't have a traffic cone there, though. No. We knocked the queen out of the air. Let's take a look at the final fight, actually. That uh, that happened. See how the trundle did. I heard it for a second. Oh, there we go. Oh, got it. And I think, again, this goes down to decision-making, because you're right, Mianhua is over the wall, but what is, what's the grand plan here, BLG? Even if he gets to steal, what happens? So, that's 100%. Remember, Camille is dead, so we already made a mention of the fact that if Gragas goes for the steal, he's dead. Even if they get the Baron, they lose the fight, because it's an outright 3v5, and sure, Amazing J comes back into the fight, comes back late, because he has to teleport, so, yeah, you respawn. There's too much that is in favor of Sunning Gaming. Yeah. So for SNG, I mean, if you're BLG in this instance, a lot of it comes down either take the fight mm -hmm. or back away and say, we'll try and defend around Baron. So that's uh, the decision. It, it's a tough call either way, but it's either make taking the game to a longer state where you can say, we have enough wave clear, we have a Sivir. Yep. Or we're ending it now. I guess they just chose that option. Yeah, it was it was unfortunate. And it was also just cracking the trundle through that fight. I mean, absolutely just monstrous. Yeah. It, it, it was just a sad day for Jin Jia. He was just standing there throwing boomerangs and trundle was just continuing to walk towards him. He was yeah. like throwing boomerangs. There's nothing you can do. Literally nothing you can do against a trundle who's just that big. And it's also annoying when you have a tank and it's like, subjugate. And it's just like, all right, cool. I guess I just don't do anything for the next 10 seconds. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break and we'll see who will win this best of three. Sunil Dayan Bohe Yi Hanja Jekong, Bishu Genchang, Bishu Jimbo.